Welcome back, all you dad hustlers out there. This is Will Crown back again for yet another episode of The Dad Hustle. And I am super excited today because I'm here with my good friend, Gustavo Vargas. I've been trying to set this up for a long time. This guy is super busy. And when I say that, it's not an overstatement. He does everything from being a radio personality, a TV host and personality. He's got a business in the financial services industry. He's a marketing guru. This guy is a family man, and I am thrilled and honored to have him here with us today. Mr. Gustavo Vargas. Thank you very much for having me, compadre. You yeah. know, he, he is the one who's busy, and I'm so happy and honored and uh, blessed just to share this uh, with you, my friend, and with all your audience. Hey, it really is. Uh, it's my pleasure, my privilege. Let me ask you, you know, this show is, mm-hmm. as I said, Dad Hustle. It's all about being a 100% family man and a 100% businessman, following your passions, whatever it is that you love, you're, you're pursuing it wholeheartedly. Tell mm-hmm. me about the dad side first. You are a father. You got kids. I'm a father of okay. four. Three beautiful daughters, one beautiful boy. Wow. And uh, they're all grown-ups. Thanks, the Lord. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the, the youngest is uh, 23. The oldest is 27. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, you really back-to-back oh, yeah, there. Four kids in four years? Yeah, you know what? Let's do it right now. This guy doesn't play around. He's like that in business, too. So that's good. Well, how long have you been in the entertainment industry? Okay. When I came from Guadalajara, from Mexico, okay. to establish and plant my flat here in L.A., that's been 29 years ago. 29 yeah, years. 29, yeah. And so ever since you got here, you were in this industry. Yeah, um, I flew from Guadalajara. I was doing radio at the time. Okay. And uh, I, they hired me. They got a nice contract for, for me. So I just flew. I, I quit in February, and I started working in L.A. in March. Wow. That was the second day of March, 1989. What do you got going on right now, career-wise? Well, I got my, my plate full, I would say, because... Yeah. Uh, I do have a radio show for Univision. Mm-hmm. I do have a radio show in this platform, which is an application for this huge magazine. It's called El Aviso. It's 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 been around yeah. for three decades. Yeah, and super impressive. He gave me a tour, and this place is amazing. Great staff, great people too. Yeah, I love it. And uh, I I do TV for Canal 22. I'm about to launch another uh, TV show for them as well in sports. Okay. And uh, well, Los Deportes. And Los Deportes, oh, see, you know, Los Deportes. See, see. And, you know. and uh, what else? Uh, I own my, my uh, agency, my advertising agency, and I'm also in finances, you know, and wow. you know the company, World Financial Group. Well, that's terrific. Mm-hmm. That's terrific. So if you've been in the entertainment industry for that long and even before mm-hmm. you came to the United States, what was that like as a father raising kids? Because I know from firsthand experience, this industry can be very demanding of your time, yeah, to say is. the least. It is. What was that like? Yeah, when, when I came here, I was 24 years old. I was single. Mm. But I came back to Guadalajara. I married my that time uh, uh, girlfriend. Mm. And uh, she came here. She take care of my kids. She was a full-time mom. I was able to you know hustle all out there for 16, 18 hours or whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. And uh, my wife at the time, she always took care of uh, the girls and also of my boy. But it's hard. Let me tell you, it's hard. It is hard. So you mentioned 14, 16 hour days, something like that? Yeah, yeah, because uh, back there, uh, I I, I was doing the morning drive, Uh which is from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. So you need to wake up around 3.30, no later than 3.30 in the morning. And then, you know, hit the, the... hit the, the freeway, go to the radio station, were there. Then after that, I have a, a middle middle of the day TV show. And right after, I, I have a, a broadcasting school. Wow. I was running a broadcasting school. I teach people how to do what I do. And then it was long days, yeah. Back to back to back. Yeah. Well, obviously, during that time, it had to be super difficult like to actually make time for the kids, but were you able to find time for dance lessons or acting lessons or recitals oh, yeah. or things like that? No. That was a priority. My weekends were, you know, all you know, booked <laughs> with uh, kids' activities. Oh, wow. My, my older son, Gustavo, he, he plays soccer okay. in, in a great level. He, he has a scholarship for uh, one of major colleges because of uh, his abilities of playing. So I was with him pretty much the entire weekend. We travel all around uh, wow. the United States with the tournaments and all that. Uh, my girls, they were in um, uh, gymnastics and piano lessons and uh, you name it. Yeah. Karate, taekwondo, whatever. You know. Right. So the true dad hustle. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Normally, Monday to Friday was like all work. 
60, 70 hours, whatever. And then the, the, the weekends I really take care of. So there was no like, uh, oh, let me take a day and sit, and sit on the couch. Uh, no, not no, really. No, no, not really. But uh, when, when I, I took vacations, we were yeah. like, you know, let's take a vacation. An entire week or two weeks ago, whatever. Relax. Yeah, relax. Oh, that's and enjoy awesome. the family, enjoy the kids. So right now, you actually have transitioned as well from the entertainment industry into a different industry. Tell me a little bit about that. I'm using, you know, all the my abilities of communication, my expertise, and a lot of people because yeah. I I made a lot of connections, good people, with the, you know prime time people like this guy right here. So I'm able to to talk about uh, what I do now in yeah. the finances uh, area. And um, that that's another avenue that I'm um, you know I'm I'm discovering in order to to have different streams of income you know wow because okay. I also do like voiceovers and commercials and whatever you know and I've seen you do lots of different interviews and as you said commercials and things of that nature who are some interesting or famous people that you've met along your journey well I don't know from politicians from like, you know, I don't know the Mexican president to wow. Artists like Tom Cruise, that type of people. Yeah, I yeah. had the, I had the chance to interview the, the Jennifer Lopez's and uh, Salma Hayek's and uh, wow. all these beautiful ladies. Yeah, yeah. I saw you do one with uh, Will Ferrell. Oh yeah, he can't help he himself but be funny. funny. Yeah. I met him before too, and he yeah. just he just cracked me up. It was at a studio in Hollywood, and it's just like everything he said. It, it was like he wasn't trying to be funny, but he just was yeah, funny. Yeah, I mean, you just can help, but. The, Love about it. Yeah. What kind of transition or, or crossover would you say there is from the entertainment industry that you've done for so many years to what you're doing currently? You know what? Once uh, now that you mentioned, I, I have a friend who happens to be a pastor. He is my mentor. His name is David Salignana. And I was I was talking to him one day not many years ago, and uh, he asked me who you are, and I told him, "Oh, you know, I'm a I'm a radio personality, a TV personality." No, 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 no. He asked me again, who you really are? Wow. And then I didn't know what to answer. So he went to, you know what? You're made on the, of, uh, of the image of God. So you're a son of God, just to begin with. So you realize that, yeah, it, it is true. And then he mentioned, Gustavo, you had so many abilities. It's like everybody else out there. You have so many abilities, but you need to first uh, discover them and then apply them. So he mentioned, you know what? For example, if some cap, uh, some business come across to you, what do you do with that business? Oh, I told him, you know what? Normally I refer that to someone that I know. So what don't you do it? If you're able to That's you know, good advice. get a share of it. And uh, just, just to be an entrepreneur, like connect these people with these sure. old people, you have a right to receive a, a, a share of, of the cake. Yeah. And I said, you know what, you're right. And um, that was that was like a huge discovery for me. Wow. I thank my my Lord and my pastor because of that. And I've been doing uh, conducting business like that since then. I think that's a good rule of thumb to live by. Mm -hmm. You know, um, always be open to opportunities. Always be open to opportunities. Don't yeah. say no to opportunities. Definitely. Uh, God is always blessing you, but you need to to take those blessings instead of yeah. rejecting them or put them away or give them to somebody else. Hey, take care of it. Use them for your own good, for the own good of your family, community. It's funny because a lot of times we as fathers mm -hmm. and as businessmen, like we ask for blessings. If we're praying, we're just like, if we're struggling, we're going through whatever situation, we're like asking, Lord, help me through this. And like you said, there might be it's an answer right, right in front of you, but we don't, okay, yeah, you take care of this, or you take it. We don't take advantage of the opportunities in the moment that they present themselves. And there are so many. I mean, yes. the world is full of opportunities. That's so true. Circumstances don't, uh, don't tell who you really are. I mean, circumstances are just uh, uh, problems to be solved in order to, to achieve greatness. It's just what it is for right now. Yep. Exactly. You're it's right. all subject to change. So It is. It's in your ED. And it's our decision, isn't it? That's awesome. So I love that. And you mentioned your pastor. Were there any other mentors or people maybe that inspired you to get even into your, your entertainment industry? Was there anything that kind of was a catalyst that mm -hmm. guided you into that industry? Uh, I would say my older brother. Okay. You know, when I was a kid, my, I had my older brother. He is 11 years older than me. Okay. He was already a DJ, a famous DJ in Guadalajara huh. in, in, in Mexico. And, and I was a little kid. And I said, you know what? I'm going to be something like that, but better. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like that, but a little be bit better. Be better. <laughs> Sounds yeah, like and that. He, he's a great, tremendous DJ. He's still sure. working in San Bernardino. Wow. But uh, that, that's what I did. So that's that's when I knew that there were some um, uh, careers, some, uh, how do you call it, uh, some degrees to, to get. So I went and pursued that uh, journalism and then uh, communication sciences. And that's what landed me here, the land of opportunities. Thank God for the United States of America. I really love this country, man. Yeah. Tell me this. So you coming from the country of Mexico, mm -hmm. would you say that your upbringing there has perhaps led you to some of the success that you currently have here in the U.S.? Yes, definitely. Most definitely. Because, yeah. you know, I got educated there. Sure. I got my values there. And uh, when I came here with those values, and I, I add the American values, it's like a, it's like Best compound interest. Worlds. Yeah. It's like a compound interest, you know, <laughs> like grows and grows and grows. Wow! So I'm, I'm taking the best of Mexico. I'm taking the best of the United States of America, and and I have this this huge, um, humongous opportunity. Yeah, I think there's a book. Maybe it's not a book, but I've heard it talked about a lot before. The the immigrant work ethic and that mentality of mm -hmm. why. So often, immigrants from different countries come here to the United States and thrive, just bust through the seams because they don't see the same limitations that perhaps someone who was born here in the United States of America and takes it for granted does. So I think that's huge, and I can obviously see that success is running through your veins and everything mm -hmm. this guy has put his hands to, he's just successful at. It's awesome. Yeah, I'm going to agree more with that. Yeah. Know, that's a fact because we really come here with uh, with the purpose. We really want to make it. We know this is the land of the free and home of the brave. God bless this country. And and we take we take uh, uh, advantage of those humongous opportunities. and. We're we're hungry, you know, yeah. and we really want to make it because we we want to leave a legacy for for our kids, for our grandkids, and pretty much for the entire society. Hey, there's a lot that myself and everyone out there listening can learn from that. Mm -hmm. So I'd encourage everyone to take note. I'm curious, when I was looking you up, mm -hmm. one recurring theme or name that I kept seeing was El Chubidu. <laughs> <laughs> what is El Chubidu, and where did this come from, Gustavo? Okie dokie, Chubby Doo, that's a nickname that I acquired without without wanting, you know? Okay, they just um, put it on you. Yeah, so this is the thing. <laughs> when I was doing radio back there, back then in Guadalajara, I create this uh, special effect, I would call it, that goes Chubby Doo. And then my, my teammates, my, my fellow announcers, mm -hmm. uh, start bugging me with that name and started to call me, hey, to be do. <laughs> and I told them, you know what, don't say that. Especially oh. don't say it on the air because uh, it's going to stick. It's going to stick and people right. are going to start calling me that. Of course, uh, they, they insist in calling me like that. The nickname stick with me and uh, I, I couldn't get rid of it. So now a lot of people, more, more people know me by the to be do nickname that. By, by my name, Gustavo Vargas. It's a it's a good calling card, man. Yeah. Do you do you still despise it or is it okay? No, no, no. I love it. Okay, I embrace it. You know, because sometimes I call. Let's say I call to this important artist, uh, singer. He passed away, uh, Juan Sebastian, and I call him. Hey, you know what? This is Gustavo Vargas. Who? Gustavo Vargas. Who's that? I, I, I'm a Chubidu. Oh, you're a Chubidu. What can I do for you? you know? It's like different. So yeah. 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 Sometimes the nickname, uh, I'm guessing it's it's bigger than my name. Yeah, it's more well known. Yeah, maybe maybe you can help me come up with something. Yeah. I gotta come up with a cool name. El Guerito. El Guerito. El Guerito. I like El Guerito. Guerito. Yeah. Guerito. What is that? Yeah, it's like uh, the, the white blonde, guy. The blonde. The blonde. The blonde. Okay. I'll take it. So after all those years of you being in the entertainment industry, Monday through Friday, nonstop, and then on the weekends, it's nonstop kid stuff. Mm -hmm. What are your kids doing these days? They're all adults, you mentioned, but what are they up to? They're all adults. Uh, I love them. They're driven. They're good people. They're focused. They want to do good. Yeah. So, I know your daughter. I know one of his daughters, yeah, Natalia. She's, Natalia. she's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she really is. So yeah, focused. Yeah. yeah, so focused, and then she knows what she wants, yeah. and it, it, that that applies to every single one of my kids. And uh, I respect them, I love them, and I admire them very, very much. Your yeah. your daughter's in business. Yeah, with as well. Natalia, my daughter's in business with me. Angelita, my other uh, kid, is in business with me. Wow, my terrific. wife is also in business with me. So it, it's great. It's like a real family business that we have the chance, the opportunity to to serve to to That's help awesome. some other people. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, it's about serving. It's about serving. 
Uh, I, I, I think I, I once heard you saying it's uh, the mission before the commission. Yeah. And that's totally true. Man. Mission before commission. Make sure that you're always putting other people's needs ahead of your own and yeah. you'll always win at the end of the day. Yeah. It's a because you know what? We don't win. We earn. Mm, I like that. You know, it's different yeah. because when you say I win, it means that somebody loses. Oh, but like when that. you earn, you really serve people and then you earn your money or you earn your happiness or you earn whatever. That's right. There doesn't have to be a loser. No. Nope. Dude, I just got a solid nugget. Thank you so much, Gustavo Vargas. No problem. At the end of the day, really, that's what it boils down to. You know, we all have our careers and our passions and things that we're striving towards. But like his pastor told him, who are you really? You're not just a radio producer. You're not just a writer. You're not just an actor. You're not just an entrepreneur. You are who you are deep down inside. You're a child of God or whatever you believe. So, si, senor. Depth, you know? Depth. There's more than just the career. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, that, that cannot define you, you know? What defines you is the ability of being a child of God or a man of God yeah. or a woman of God. And you're full of abilities. You're full of capacities. You can really conquer the world as a think and grow rich. Oh, Whatever Napoleon you can Hill. think, yes. you can do. That's a good segue. Um, with you having such a successful career, on this show I often talk about personal development. Yeah. Yeah. I'm big into reading and or listening to audios, constantly feeding my mm -hmm. mind. Has that played a part oh, yeah, in of your development? Well, every single day. Is know, that right? Every single day. Well, I read the Bible every single day. I've been mean, read it from Genesis to uh, Revelation six times already, complete with all things. It's the greatest book ever. Uh, I also I also like uh, Napoleon Hill. Mm -hmm. um, I love uh, how to make friends and influence people. That's another Dale book Carnegie. that I really yeah. I, I highly recommend that. And I, I discovered recently a great book. It's called Business Secrets from the Bible. Really? Oh yeah. It's oh, a, I'm gonna have to get that. I've oh, never yeah, heard you that. You need to get that. You need to get that. It's wow. an awesome book. It's all uh, Bible based, pretty much about in the in the Torah, the first uh, uh, five books of right. uh, of uh, the Bible, and it, it goes uh, deep into how to succeed, really succeed in in business. And uh, at the end of the day, the key is this: the most people you serve, the most people you help, the bigger the check, the better wow. the situation the best family, the best situation that, that you are going to be in. Business Secrets from the Bible. I, it's I going on my even, list. Uh, it's a Jewish author. Okay. Great. If you could go back in time, Gustavo, mm -hmm. and give your 29-year younger self mm -hmm. some advice, one piece of advice, oh. what would it be? Uh, take care of finances. Right? I wish I could go back 20 years and say that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who was uh, Warren Buffett? Rule number one, never lose money. No. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. I really put my money in some bad investments, mm -hmm. like uh, real estate in 2008, you remember what happened. Yeah. And I, I gamble a lot of my money in, in stocks and all that. Uh, I wish I knew the IOL back then, you know, but uh, now I know it. And, and, and that's what I teach also to, to my friends, to my family, and uh, to the people I serve. That's terrific. So, speaking of which, if you need investment advice, this man is a great source to go to. Not only is he amazing, like on and off the air, but he really <laughs> is now been taught and, and doing great things, teaching others how to safely manage their money to make sure that it's growing properly. Gustavo, tell me, where can these guys find you if they want to find you or look you up online? Oh, it's pretty easy. I'm, uh, I'm in Instagram, I'm in Facebook. He's in, everywhere. Pretty much everywhere. Uh, I'm in Facebook as my whole name, Gustavo Vargas Saucedo. It's kind of long, but you know, Mexicans love long names. <laughs> and in the Instagram, you can find me as Gustavo KTNQ, which are the call letters for the radio show that I do for Univision. Okay. Gustavo KTNQ. And, um, well, uh, we'll need to give uh, my, my cell phone number if you want to call me. Like <laughs> no, they don't need to call you. Like, where can they tune in? I know you do a show with these guys and you've got several projects going. Where can they tune in to see you? Oh, work? yes, yes. Yeah. I, I, I do own an application. It's called El Aviso Radio. El Aviso Radio. So you just go to your iPhone or your Android, download the app, and you can you can listen and see our radio show from 10 in the morning to till 12 mm -hmm. and it runs the entire day because we have a variety of shows health finances politics uh, sports anything goes nice. i'm allowed to launch a, a sports tv show okay. i cannot disclose the whole details sure, but, sure. but it's coming el aviso uh, solamente en espanol 
Yeah, well, sometimes we run some uh, uh, interviews. For example, when okay. uh, these guys is, is going to come into my radio show, of course, the interview course. is going to be is <laughs> going to be in English. I'll do some uh, translation. It'd be a really short interview if it was all in Spanish. Yeah, I only got like two, three sentences. So it's not bien. It'd be about it. One last question. For of you, course, Gustavo. go ahead. If you can give our dad hustlers out there any one piece of advice. Yeah. Maybe they're early in their journey, maybe not so much, but wherever they're at, what would you tell them? Okay, okay. Listen up, you guys. That is out there. This is the thing. You love your kids, right? Well, I'm going to ask you again. You really love your kids? This is what love is about. Love is about giving time. Mm. Giving quality time. That's good. Okay? Um, the Word of God says that uh, the highest love is giving life to the people who surround you. Well, life is time, compadre. So if you put some time into your kids, and you train them, and you teach them, and you show them the values, and most importantly, they see you applying those values that you that you preach, yeah. then it's gonna be awesome for you, for them, for the city, for the state, for the country, for the world. Just give some really good time to them that's dude that's terrific advice not really the answer that i expected which i don't know what i expected but i love it it's so practical and so needed uh, really i think that was just for me i might not even share this interview because that right there was just for me so. <laughs> no thank you again so much guys thank definitely you. give this guy some love make sure you follow him on all the social media platforms i'm going to put his platforms right down there i'll make sure all of you guys tune in to check his stuff both the things he's done previously and what he has coming up because there's some exciting things on the horizon for gustavo vargas i'm thrilled to have this guy not only on the show today but also as a friend i really appreciate you brother thank, thank you very much god bless you and your family god bless you as well bro thank you peace